working at the city level. Cities are facing real challenges today. For example, if we look at just the green building projects that are occurring right now within North America, we can see that by 2015 there'll be close to over 500,000 certified green buildings created. This is in conjunction with the infrastructure boom that's occurring. Large populations of people are starting to move towards these urban corridors uh, globally. And while there's a demand on our infrastructure, if we look at just what's happening in North America, we can see that infrastructure is in a very dire situation. So cities are actually needing to compete both regionally and globally for the urbanization and the economic development um, of their city core. They need to do this while doing it in a sustainable green way and producing a higher quality of life for their citizens. At the same time, they need to manage their investment in infrastructure, not just what they have today, but also what they are planning for tomorrow. So the urban designers, what they need to be able to do is make better informed decisions. They need to share models without having to share the underlying data and create and manage representationally accurate city models. So if we look at what's available today, there are 3D GIS models um, that have been in the industry for a while. And however, while they do a great job at, at massing and uh, doing some rudimentary planning, they often lack accuracy for robust design and documentation. So to overcome this challenge, Autodesk has looked at the different types of technologies that are used within a city. And this is really CAD, GIS, and BIM technologies. CAD being the precision of design, building information models, which is really the flexible, intelligent models uh, for building uh, scapes, and GIS, which we can think of as the analytical tools that are used to actually do some of the planning uh, within a city model itself. While these are coming together, converging, these technologies need to live and coexist within a cityscape. By doing this, tomorrow's city models will be able to assist in transit-oriented development, smart growth, and the type of green sustainable design that's becoming more and more important to these cities. So why Autodesk? Well, if you look at mapping, building, engineering, and utility data at city levels, all that information is really already in a drawing format. So Autodesk has come up with tools that can quickly bring that data together into a digital city. And using some of the technology that Autodesk has created for movies and video games, we've applied that for the visualization, simulation, and analysis uh, within a set of tools. Those tools that I'm going to be showing you are called Land Explore. Now, there's a suite of different tools that allow you to create these cityscapes, but also to distribute those. So if we look at the first one, Land Explorer Studio is the authoring tool to create your cityscape. Land Explorer Server allows you to distribute that over the web. And we have different viewers here as well. Land Explorer Publisher creates a KML that can be distributed to Google Earth. The Express Viewer actually takes information and allows it to be viewed as a you know on a desktop viewing application and then the city GML viewer is a free viewer that allows you to push information to that format these are all free downloads and available today to take advantage of for a trial period so let's actually look at a demonstration of Land Explorer and in this case we'll be using Land Explorer Studio now first thing I'm going to do is open up a new project and I'm going to bring in some terrain information. This is actually some LiDAR information that I've used Studio to stitch together and create a terrain surface. Go ahead and open that up. Add that into my Studio environment. And here we can see that LiDAR information represented as uh, a terrain surface. So now that we've got the terrain, I'm actually going to insert a raster layer, some imagery that will then drape on top of our terrain surface. 
So in this case, I've got some aerial imagery from 2007. And here we can see that. And if we zoom in, we'll actually see how that information can drape and actually look at the contour of the uh, terrain information underneath that. The next thing I'm going to do is add some actual uh, building information to this. And I've got a number of different options for that. In this case, I'm going to choose a shape file, a two-dimensional shape file of information to create my buildings. So we'll go ahead and choose an attribute in my shape file for the building height. Go ahead and select that attribute. Go ahead and click Next. And I can choose now to, uh, if I had information in my shape file that coordinated to a roof type, to assign that value to my building roofs as well. So right now, the Land Explorer Studio is taking those two-dimensional building footprints, and it's extruding them based on a property within that shape file. So here we can see those, those buildings extruded. And if I double click on a building, now I can go ahead and adjust certain properties. In this case, maybe the uh, elevation of the building uh, if I want to. I can even assign, in this case, a different roof for that building. I can go ahead and, for that individual building, assign a facade or image to the outside. And we can see here. So I can work with my building information both um, individually or I can work with it um, as a combined uh, element within Land Explorer Studio. Here you'll see the attributes coming from that shape file and I'm actually going to go ahead and change one of the attributes, in this case the age of the building. All right. So I've made some modifications to that one building. But now I'm going to go ahead and click on the entire building element here. And I'm going to apply or specify some facades for all of the buildings. So in this case I've got a folder of facade images. And now I'm going to go ahead and again using an attribute from that shape file which is facade which is basically denoting what image to apply to each building. Go ahead and set that. So now we can see all of those buildings that have the facade assigned to them. Wow, really quickly, I've already got the start of my city. And right now I'm going to just specify to use the underlying uh, imagery to apply to the rooftops of those buildings. All right. Wow, within just a few steps, I've created a cityscape. Now, what I'm going to do from a cityscape perspective, it's important to have both your man-made infrastructure, your buildings, um, your utilities, but also to have that natural environment. In this case, I'm adding some trees to my cityscape. And this is coming from an SDF, or spatial data file format. Go ahead and open that up. So I've got the points for my trees now. And what I'm going to do is just specify the image to apply for my trees. So again, I've got an attribute uh, within my SDF file that specifies what tree. I'll choose a default value of, uh, of an oak tree. And I'll also point to the directory where the different tree images exist. Once I'm done, I'm just going to choose a height property to assign to those trees. This comes from that SDF file, and I'll go ahead and apply that to my environment. All right, now that I'm done, we can see that the trees are integrated into my city model. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add some more context to uh, this city. And in this case, let's go ahead and add a playground to our city. And I'm going to use 
a model that was actually created in Autodesk 3ds Max and this is a playground that we're going to be adding into in this case this neighborhood alright so the models been added and I'm just going to specify on screen by double clicking where I want to place that playground if we go ahead and zoom in we can see the detail of that playground very highly detailed high level of detail for that model I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing but in this case I'm going to go ahead and add um, perhaps a, a train not a train but a uh, bus stop into this neighborhood as well so we'll choose uh, that bus shelter again this is coming from our 3ds max environment and click that in there now in this case we're just going to change some of the rotation for this bus shelter now that that's been updated very quickly I've integrated that model into my cityscape all right. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's propose that uh, as a planner, as a city planner, maybe a new subdivision is going in, and I want to look at uh, perhaps the the building and development of that development. So here we've got some farmland within our cityscape, and what I'm going to do is actually pull in the proposed development within my cityscape uh, as a raster image that will overlay on top of the terrain. So we'll choose our development image, go ahead and click OK, and we'll see that new subdivision that's going to be going in. Now in this case, I want to bring in a highly detailed building model. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a building information model or BIM. Uh, and this has actually come originally from our Revit product. It's been converted to a 3ds Max model, and right now you'll see uh, I'm just changing some of the scaling uh, for that model so um, it's accurate with my entire cityscape. All right, so it brought in the city model in a default orientation, and what I'm going to do is just change the rotation to face the correct direction. Okay, change the rotation there. And this is a high level detailed model. That means that it has all the semantic elements of a building. Uh, different rooms, different um, uh, furniture, if you will, with inside this building model, unlike the other low level detailed uh, buildings that came from that original shape file. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a bookmark and when I click on that it's going to take me to the exact location that I want in this case inside this building information model I'm actually doing line of sight um, analysis here I'm actually looking out to see what the view looks like outside of my kitchen all right so very powerful I've integrated both low-level detailed building models with the high-level um, building information model that originally came from Autodesk Revit. So now what we can do is we can look at this information. I'm going to turn off some of the other buildings and let's ask the question of if this is my house uh, how far do I have to walk to actually get to uh, the main street there. So I'm using the distance query tool. Go ahead and walk a path to uh, the main street and there we can see that it's a distance of uh, roughly a hundred feet to get to the main street there. So we have the distance query tools available uh, to the end user as well.
Now, the next thing that we can do is using a technology called FDO, Feature Data Objects, I'm going to connect to a spatial database. We have databases uh, like Oracle or Arc SDE, uh, web services, but in this case I'm going to use a spatial database called MySQL. I'm going to go ahead and enter in the login credentials for that MySQL database. Go ahead and put the username, password, and the data store for some building footprints. All right, select our data store. And we're going to do the same thing. These are going to be low-level buildings. And we are going to go ahead and extrude those as they come into that Land Explorer Studio environment. All right, so here we can see those buildings. And I may, as a new property owner, that building that I added in, want to know maybe how often these buildings uh, come available for purchase. So I'm actually going into my action-based rules here. And I'm going to say that I want to change the building color. In this case, uh, we'll choose red. Based on certain criteria of the buildings. So in this case, I want to see that these buildings are considered you know, residential buildings, or in this case, uh, they're denoted as dwellings and if they're listed if they're currently on the market so we'll say equals uh, yes when we're done with that we'll go ahead and click apply and close and here we can see that those buildings now have been uh, updated to meet that property that is these are buildings that are uh, family homes and they're both listed on the market today as for sale Now, one of the other things that we can do is go ahead and create quickly some video files to share this information. And in this case, we're just going to create a panoramic view of the city right now. And this is at my current location that I uh, am at within my city scale. So let's go ahead and take a look at that AVI. And this is called Panorama. Go ahead and double click on that. And now we can go ahead and share this movie file quickly with the public, with uh, other stakeholders, and show them what this uh, city model looks like firsthand. So, very quickly, I've been able to integrate. Uh, traditional GIS information, uh, building information models, uh, been able to bring in terrestrial information, bring that all together to create my city model. So in summary, Land Explorer Studio, it supports the city GML format. We can quickly create realistic cityscapes. We can use that FDO technology to connect to many different file formats and even databases many that are in open formats. We can query and, and use distance tools which allow intelligent uh, analysis capabilities and we have different viewing options here. We can publish to movies, we have different viewers that are free, we can even publish this information over the web. So in summary, Land Explorer allows you to integrate CAD, GIS, and BIM to create your city model.